Thank you so much for attending the second annual State of the COSI. Your time and interest is greatly appreciated. And we thank our sponsors who made this possible, Rocket Farms, San Mateo Credit Union, and Tri-Counties Bank. We at the Chamber are so thankful for our partnerships with the different COSIDE agencies and our ability to collaborate more and more has become a key to success for COSIDE inclusiveness and strength. We hope you find these presentations informational and please invite you to reach out to myself at hello at hmbcoastsidechamber.com if you would like to be connected with any of our presenters to ask them questions that you may have. Again, we thank you so much for joining us. It is our pleasure to bring you this information and look forward to bringing you more throughout the rest of the year. That's the proper window. This is the presentation. Great, are we all good with that folks? I can see, nod your head. Yeah, you, okay, cool. Um, I'm going to go fast. This is where we are. You guys know that PMAC has the bottom part of this, the green area you can see over here on the right. Um, un unofficially, we've actually sort of adopted the community to the north of us, uh, sort of along the Gazos Creek line. They weren't the official um, original boundaries for that. Uh, most of the region uh, commercially is uh, constrained by uh, the coastal zone and other uh, activities. Um, we've got state parks all around us. It makes us a tourist attraction, but there's a great deal of agriculture as well. It affects their community's uh, financial basis, if you will, uh, as well as the county. So it's a heavily agricultural area, um, but you all basically know this stuff. A lot of it is protected as well. And there's a move between the post and mid pan and the various large uh, conservancy practices as well as private conservancies for the area. Um, it, uh, again, it's part of the draw of this region. Um, oops, going the wrong way. Uh, again, as an overview, this is a summary. Um, this literally is an old map I found that I think it was guys highlighted with a, in a gentleman's agreement and scotch taped it together and all that. Um, the county has asked us just a few weeks ago to straighten this up. And so they, you'll see a new map coming. Um, most of our folks are represent are living in the Pescadero area. Uh, I happen to represent the, the Butino Canyon and a little bit of Dearborn Park. Um, and we currently have no one in area two, although we have uh, a very uh, capable person that I'm thinking of Shanghai as well into that role. Um, this is important because there's a lot of people that our, our Red Cross efforts for recent evacuation planning uh, made us realize there's a lot of um, hidden folks down here, if you will, and uh, in the section two. And um, our most recent uh, council, the most recent person to join us is, has started an effort to make sure that PMAC reaches out to our, uh, our overlooked neighbors, the language difficulties, you know, other issues uh, are abound in the region. Um, People used to think that there were never fires down our way in San Mateo County. Uh, I'm on the Fire Safe Council Advisory Board, so it's been a long-standing issue. Now we know there's fires. Um, we just had a we just had a fire a few weeks ago in those high wind events up in uh, Butino Canyon uh, near Dearborn Park. About 30 acres went up in January, which is unknown. During the CZU fires, we lost a number of homes, which has exacerbated our, our currently uh, difficult uh, housing situation anyway. Um, but a lot of hard work and luck and the wind direction saved many homes. Half Moon Bay was crucial. It was like the heart of supplies coming down into this area. And I take this opportunity to thank uh, those of you that participated. And even if you didn't know you were, you probably were participating by not coming down and being a disaster tourist during the period. Um, the Red Cross and Puente uh, handled hundreds of evacuees from this area. And it's continuing to this day. And a number of these homes um, in the southern part of this map where my cursor is, uh, they're gone. They're just gone. And people are um, unfortunately trying to occupy their, uh, their lands, let's say, in, in rough shelters right now, which is causing some other issues. Um, but it's nothing like Santa Cruz County, which we were lucky about. The current risk is debris flow. If we have another heavy rain, um, 
we could uh, run into troubles, especially again, down towards some of the farms in this area of the lower part of this. Again, we evacuated uh, about 500 households uh, during the storms a few weeks ago and a coast side cert, the Half Moon Bay Cert organization and uh, in the county uh, were, were again, crucial in helping this area which uh, survive. I'm in the, I mean, I'm in the South Coast Cert, which is a much smaller organization because there's just fewer people down there with the interesting capabilities. Um, COVID has been a slow grind for our area economically. Uh, Puente has done an, an amazing job um, in what they're doing. They're moving a lot of money through uh, to the community and direct support, discreet and direct support. They're housing people. Um, the quarantining issues in, in the congregate housing, the, the farm housing, it was very complicated. And so even with these houses burned down, they're trying to find places to put people. Um, I've seen it in my own community where they've found uh, summer rentals and gotten them opened up for um, some families that need to get out of situations. Um, the farming business seems okay after the initial mar market shocks of last year. Tourist business has adapted. We've got lots of people coming all the time. Um, do arts, uh, 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 the coffee shop, the sandwich shop, they're all doing fine. The, the burger joint over on uh, the coast on the end of Gaza's Creek is, is doing good uh, weekend business. Um, the community groups are meeting outside when they can. Uh, we've had outside drive-ins when the weather's fine, hosted by KPDO, our, our regional coastal radio station. Um, just so you know, our school district actually stretches out further than PMAC. It goes up to uh, La Honda area and whatnot. So uh, some of our concerns range outside of our immediate area. We've been working with La Honda. They'd sort of like a PMAC or a La Honda MAC themselves to deal with the county, similar to uh, what we see uh, up in Montero way. So um, that may be happening. It's not really a, a, a wealthy level. These are uh, old, this is a slide from last year. I haven't been able to get an update yet. I think we're waiting for the census uh, stuff to come through. The um, <clears throat> the number of folks living in poverty uh, in this top graph really spiked a few years ago uh, it was among the kids. And uh, I'm really curious about seeing the current graph with the loss of employment in the area. Um, we're a low income community. Uh, I've done some grant work and some maps say that we're also a food desert, which we think gets crazy with all this agriculture, but that's almost the way it works sometimes, uh, especially down uh, by Ana Nueva in those areas. Um, these are the, our groups. You've, you probably know uh, most of these. Uh, unfortunately, the, just like the, the uh, pumpkin festival, we had to cancel the arts and fun festival, which actually is fun uh, last year. And who knows what we're gonna do this year. Uh, CSA 11 is our water district. Uh, they pumped a lot of water for the regional fires and it was trucked out. Um, I'm with PMAC. Uh, Sustainable Pescadero is an interesting group. It's like a splinter citizens group that is more forward looking. PMAC sort of responds to things for the most part. Sustainable Pescadero is trying to figure out how to solve some of the housing, zoning issues for uh, school teachers and whatnot. Okay, it's a lot, tough year for highlights. Last year I had a whole mess of highlights. Uh, Puente is doing great. No one died in the CZU in our county. Uh, the small businesses are, are getting by. We've got these movies. Uh, going on. Um, we had a, a wonderful event with regional firefighters, like the community, uh, what they call themselves, bootleg or uh, rebel firefighters that stayed behind and, and put out fires in the area. Uh, had a nice event at uh, Haley Farms with that. Um, the dredge, which I mentioned last year, is being completed, actually was tested this year. Uh, water's flowing flying. It's not backing up in ways it's not intended to, and it is backing up in ways it's intended to. We had no giant fish kills out there at the marsh. Um, a side effect of the COVID has been a lot of more regional interaction between groups. That's been great. And uh, there's been a big push because of the at-home schooling by the county to try and get regional internet beefed up. Um, it's really hard because uh, they have to cut deals with the heavy carriers and there's not a lot of heavy carriers. Uh, by that, I mean backhaul fiber uh, carriers in the region. So uh, it's basically extending the ex extending the, the free San Mateo County internet to uh, other uh, less obvious spots in our region. And it's helped. The kids can go there in their cars and study. We'd really like to get to the houses, but it's tough. Uh, ups and downs, we're still missing a number of things. People moved out because of the fire risks, the brief flow risks. Uh, 
the parks draw a lot of people. It's great for business, but it's dangerous out there. We had a tree fall down out of the blue and in, in the Butno Canyon uh, at halftime of Super Bowl. Boom, took out the, you know, it was outrage in the village. Um, camping is going to be coming back this summer, that, uh, late summer. That will be good. Uh, and there's discussions about um, agricultural tourism permits, which I'm not quite sure. I know it's happening, but I don't quite know what that would entail. Still housing problems for farm workers, uh, water. Um, we've got a lot of issues with race cars, <laughs> clubs coming through and racing, you know, blowing off stop signs. Uh, that's a problem. The reduction in um, commercial garbage uh, has resulted in an increase in homeowner garbage stuff, which is a big deal. We're getting a lot of people dumping stuff down our way. Um, and you know about the rest, the school district funding hasn't changed and all that. And so I promise to keep it shorter and I just have. Thank you very much. Bing. Thank you, Casey. Um, we do have a couple of minutes. If anybody's got any questions for Casey, please feel free to raise your hand right now. Yeah, I, I wouldn't see them. So just let me know. It's like, it's, it's like one of those auctions where people are doing stuff and you're like, what, what are they up to? Well, it looks like your presentation was amazingly thorough and we don't have any questions at this time. We will, oh. Oh, Nate has a question. Yes, please take it away, Nate. Hey Casey, this is Nate Surdy um, with um, Compass Real Estate in Half Moon Bay. I also sell down in the South Coast too. Um, you know, with the fires we're dealing with, a crisis regarding fire insurance. Yes. Um, I know this is correlated to um, housing affordability. Is Pescadero working with the county and just with the general area? Because I see this will be a pretty big crisis for areas that are unincorporated with the county of San Mateo. Any to, uh, mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, Nate, we're, the area isn't as cohesive as uh, the areas along Skyline, Kings Mountain, Cosinea, uh, in terms of lobbying for um, insurance uh, policy changes. Uh, we have, we did some uh, handout of form letter work uh, last year before the COVID when we could get together and hand out letters and say sign and send them in. But there has not been anything um, that has produced direct results that I'm, I know of for sure. Uh, if you have, it, the, the Fire Safe Council is also, um, this issue comes up regularly there for the unincorporated parts of the county, even for like Woodside, those areas. And um, we're basically, to be honest, hoping to piggyback off of some of the more uh, resourceful communities in terms of lobbying for the rural areas. That makes sense? It does. Thank you, Casey, for answering our question. Sure, yeah, sure. I make sure everything, this is on <laughs> everyone's radar. As oh, yeah, no, I, so. you know, once you're dropped by Lloyd's of London, what do you do? Right. Yep. So, which is me. I've been dropped. By, I'm on my third policy now in the last uh, four years. Anybody else? Okay. Looks like we're good. Um, we will uh, stay after the meeting if anybody thinks of a question between now and then. Thank you so very much. Next, we're going to um see a presentation from mayor robert brownstone robert was uh became the mayor at the beginning of 2021 um, but was a crucial part of the council since 2018 and i will share robert's presentation take it away robert Thank you, Chris Lynn. Well, good morning, everyone, and thanks to the Chamber of Commerce for hosting this great event. And once again, inviting our fair city of Half Moon Bay to participate. Uh, it's an honor to be surrounded by our co-side partners. Um, and uh, we share our vision for 2021. I would say this is uh, mostly going to be a forward-looking presentation. It's only February, but in COVID time, it feels like a couple of years already. And we've been working hard on many fronts. Um, 
as we continue to navigate these uncertain times, I'm optimistic that we're starting to see some daylight at the end of the tunnel. And it's daylight that I hope is propelling us forward. Uh, next slide, next slide, please. Uh, next slide, Chrislyn. Hi, thank you. I'm having a little bit of an issue. I'm going to try to reshare it. I apologize. That's right. There we go. Great. Perfect. Thank you. So, COVID. Um, COVID is top of mind for just about everybody. And it's, um, you know, it's the issue that's going to propel us forward in terms of how it's handled. Uh, finally, um, we're fortunate vaccination distribution has begun. Uh, and while supplies of vaccine may be limited, it's obviously a critical priority to vaccinate our population starting with the most vulnerable. In keeping with the state's guidance, the County of San Mateo is working through the different phases of distribution as quickly as they're able to direct a limited supply of vaccine to the state's identified priority groups, as you see here on this slide. So we're currently vaccinating members of phase 1A, which includes healthcare workers and residents of long-term facilities, as well as phase 1B, which includes residents age 65 and older. Again, as much as we can do this as vaccine supplies allow in keeping with the state's guidance. Um, as you know, you can sign up for the county's notification tool to receive notification when the state determines eligibility, as well as information on how to make an appointment for a vaccination. And as supplies increase, as they will, the vaccine will become more readily available um, and I can't stress enough how, it's, how important it, it is for all of us not to let our guard down during this vaccination process. And to remember that you still may be a carrier. Um, you know, there's, at least with the current vaccines, as, as many of us know, there's, it's a two-dose procedure. And until you get both doses, you won't have um, the amount of immunity that the vaccine will hopefully provide. And during that process, you can remain a carrier even after you get both doses. It takes a few weeks to build up that immunity. So I think it's on all of us to communicate that as much as possible, that we should continue to wear our masks, socially distance, be cautious before and after receiving the vaccine. Um, we're not out of the woods yet, but hopefully we're on our way. Next slide, please. Another critical project now underway um, for the city is the Coastside Recovery Initiative. And the Coastside Recovery Initiative uh, is a collaborative effort between the city, the county, local businesses, nonprofits, and faith and community leaders. And this initiative recognizes that the coast side is a unified economy spanning from Devil's Slide south to the county border and east to Skyline Boulevard. The guiding principles for this coast side recovery initiative are inclusivity and equity, community engagement and innovation. And we'll start by identifying and achieving short term wins, and that'll be followed by the development and implementation of longer term strategic plans that will serve the local community and ensure both effective and measurable outcomes. The goals in the recovery of the Coast Side Recovery Initiative are twofold. Number one, we want to address the immediate needs of local businesses in the Coast Side community to effectively recover from the economic impacts of COVID-19. And the second goal is to advance strategies to lead to a more equitable, vibrant, and resilient coast side economy. Next slide, please. So community participation is key to the success of the initiative. And tonight we are hosting 
the Coastside Recovery Initiative's inaugural open house. And that'll be this evening at 6 p.m. Um, we encourage everyone here and to let everyone know um, to please join us at six o'clock tonight. Um, this will be a virtual event, obviously, and you'll hear from Lenny Mendonca, former chief economic and business advisor to Governor Gavin Newsom, on why the time is now to ramp up plans for social and economic recovery. This will also be an interactive event and there will be breakout groups to give everyone a chance to voice their opinions and give their perspectives. This is also an inclusive event and live Spanish interpretation will also be available. So we hope that you'll make it to the meeting tonight and you can all register for this event at the link on screen. And we'll also get that link out to all the participants from today. Next slide, please. We're also excited to report that despite all the COVID uh, restrictions on a lot of our capital improvement, we have started construction on the Highway 1 safety project. And this project's been on the record since 2012 as part of EDA traffic safety and operational improvements on the Highway Corridor 1, on Highway Corridor 1 as it travels through Half Moon Bay. Actual construction started on October 1st, 2020, when a small socially distanced group held a groundbreaking ceremony, including representatives from the San Mateo County Transportation Authority, County Supervisor Horsley, as well as city council members and staff. Some of the safety improvements that are part of this project include a new signalized intersection at Highway 1 and the Main Street Higgins County Road intersection, Sidewalks and pedestrian crossing improvements, bicycle facility improvements, including a bike turning box at the new signal to connect cyclists with the Naomi Partridge Trail, undergrounding of overhead utilities across Highway 1, and landscaped entry monuments welcoming visitors to the historic downtown area. Construction has been moving forward on schedule and within budget. The total budget for this project is $4 million, of which we have received $3.6 million in grants from the San Mateo County Transportation Authority. That, and that grant plus a local match of $400,000 makes up the entire construction budget. City staff, including our public works maintenance, planning, engineering, and expert consultants have worked diligently on inspections, material testing, and oversight to ensure that the project is constructed in, in, court, in accordance with standards and specifications, as well as ensuring that our operations are conducted in a safe manner. Construction is expected to be completed by the end of this calendar year. So we look forward to the completion of this project and the safety improvements that will provide not only locally, but regionally. And thank you to city staff for your continued efforts to make our community as safe as possible. Next slide, please. Um, finally, we will be holding our annual listen, listening sessions within the next few weeks. This is another opportunity for our community to share their opinions and ideas and feedback on what they believe the city council's critical priority should be for the upcoming year. Keep an eye on our social media and e-news for the dates once they're confirmed. Next slide, please. And again, I would like just to conclude with reminding us all that Coastside is a strong, resilient community. We are on the road to recovery. Thank you all for being here today and to help continue doing the necessary work that makes the coast such an amazing and desirable place, desirable place to live, work, and play. And now I think we'll open it up for a few minutes on questions. And um, hey, just before we begin, I just can't help myself. I'd like to also provide an answer to that last question that I think Nate asked about insurance and fires. And um, I just read somewhere that the state county insurance commissioner 
is beginning to put together a scheme that connects, that incentivizes um, house hardening activity to insurance rates. So educating the public on many different ways they could be hardening their homes and ways to check if people are doing that and then connect discounts on insurance to that scheme. So there is some hope out there that we can incentivize good behaviors that will prevent fires and in addition, hopefully keep the insurance rates low. So I just read that yesterday, I think. So let's see where that goes. And, and that it now is a disclosure, by the way. Is it? Okay, great. All right, now be quiet. Any questions oh, about it? <laughs> thank you, Robert. Yes, if anybody has questions, um, please feel free to raise your hand now. We'll give that a second. Otherwise, we will move forward. And again, we'll be around at the end if a question pops into your mind. Okay, I think we're good to move forward. Thank you very much, Robert. It's so much appreciated. Thank you, Kristen. So next, we're going to move on to the San Mateo County Harbor District. And we have Miss Virginia Chang Corrali, who was recently named this year's chair of their five person commission. Please take it away, Virginia. Thank you, Chris Lynn. Um, we have some great news, but I'm just going to make a few remarks to kind of kick off our presentation. In 2020, the Harbor District had a very busy year. Many, many of the things that we've done, Jim will be talking about. Many of the challenges that 2020 confronted the Harbor District with gave the Harbor District the opportunity to develop policies that benefited the district during a pandemic and a wildfire. The biggest change though for the Harbor Board was that this past election cycle in November 2020, Harbor Board commissioners were elected by district and district elections. District lines were drawn in 2018 in east to west bands and this year or this past year 2020, three districts had elections districts one, four, and five. District one is in the northern part of San Mateo County and includes Daly City, Brisbane, and sections of South San Francisco. The Harbor Board is pleased to welcome the new District one Commissioner Bill Zimke, who is on this um, at, at this meeting as well, and he's from South San Francisco. Commissioner Tom Matouche represents District four, which includes El Granada, San Carlos, and Redwood City. And I have the pleasure of representing District 5, which includes the South Coast, Menlo Park, and East Palo Alto. Commissioner Ryering and Commissioner Lorenas remain at-large commissioners, but their districts will have district elections in 2024. So that's, that's, that was a huge change for the Harbor Board and I think uh, the Harbor District in general, which we received a lot of questions about during election season. December 2020 also marked the first anniversary of General Manager Jim Pruitt, who has done an outstanding job. Never in our wildest dreams did we expect the two crises that we faced, one exasperating, exacerbating the other. But Jim and the Harbor Board met these incredible challenges and we're proud to continue doing the people's work. Without further ado, I'm honored to present General Manager Jim Pruitt to share with you the Harbor District's accomplishments in 2020. And I wanna also thank um, our incredible staff who really did an amazing job getting the Harbor District and um, whatever the county needed. You know, we were working in tandem with the county, um, the things, the resources that, that were needed. So, and Jim can talk about the incredible staff because he heads up all of the Harbor District. So Jim, please take it away. Just to confirm, I, I'm showing the title slide. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everybody. And uh, thank you for uh, inviting the Harbor District to make this presentation. It's definitely in our, our honor to do so. And thank you to the Half Moon Bay Chamber of Commerce for hosting this event. And thank you to the sponsors. Uh, it's hard to believe uh, that it's been a full year since our last event. And who would have imagined uh, the year that we've had. However, the district through the leadership and guidance of the Harbor Commission has continued to move forward and accomplish 
several significant projects and milestones in 2021, to, or 2020, excuse me, to include Pillar Point Harbor Fishing Pier, the Harbor Master Office upgrade, Johnson Pier timber piling, platform repair, the completion of the stormwater system inspection and clean out. We've also accomplished significant headway on the West Trail project, Surfers Beach, replenishment project, the RV restroom and green space project, and Catch Joanne accessible restroom projects, which I'll discuss later. Administratively, we've passed and executed a balanced budget, a, balanced, a, a budget that was nationally recognized for quality by the Government Financial Officers Association. The district also maintained the Special District Leadership Foundation Certificate of Transparency for 2021. It is also very important to point out that none of the mentioned projects or initiatives could have been accomplished without the great staff of the San Mateo Har County Harbor District and the involvement and input from the public. Today, we're looking forward, forward to the future to provide financially and environmentally responsible stewardship of our maritime resources, maintain our emergency response, and provide and encourage public access. To that end, I will discuss a few of our major projects and initiatives that we'll be tackling in 2021 to include the West Trail, or excuse me, water quality, the West Trail uh, Living Shoreline, the RV restroom and green space, Surfers Beach replenishment, Catch Joann's accessible restroom, and the Harbor District Master Plan. The first issue I'd like to discuss is the water quality issue and the total maximum daily limit. As stated by the San Francisco Water Board, bacteria densities in the waters of the beaches of Pillar Point Harbor exceed the value for water quality objectives for Enterococcus, which is a type of bacteria that indicates, uh, let me hit the slide, uh, potential for fecal contamination and elevated risk of pathogen-induced illness. Uh, I got too many screens, one moment. There's no question that there's beaches at Pillar Point Harbor have water quality concerns. Those circled are the beaches of concern at this time. And through extensive testing at the harbor, the district has shown the source of contamination come, is coming primarily from the watersheds outside the district and not outside our jurisdiction and our influence. This is, an indic this is a picture of the watershed areas. Pillar Point Harbor drains approximately 3,900 acres to include inflows from the Denison Creek, St. Augustine and Deer Creek watersheds which is comprised of open space and airport, agricultural, commercial, and residential areas. The district in the past years have taken several proactive steps to uh, address this issue. Within the breakwater, the district has uh, tested all sewage lines from restrooms to identify and repair any leaks. We inspected, cleaned, and when necessary, we repaired and replaced storm system pipes under the harbor. We sealed unauthorized drains and rerouted those drainages to the sewage system, developed and implemented dock washing systems or recovery systems, ensured all garbage bins were maintained and there's no leakage from the garbage, provided free mobile sewage and bilge pump out services to the vessels in the harbor. We placed in pet waste stations throughout the harbor property and we engaged in educational and awareness campaigns uh, concerning water quality in the harbor. Most recently, during our routine inspections, uh, the district found that the top of the fish buyer building out at the end of Johnson Pier, which is a famous, our uh, favorite roost of thousands of birds, uh, the roof was covered in bird guano. Uh, and as you can see from the picture on the left, the rain gutters of the building were completely impacted. Uh, we have recently hired a certified company that comes in now once a quarter to clean uh, the bird guano from that building and rinse it off. And the water is uh, filtered before it goes back into the harbor. This has eliminated a significant source of bird guano that has been entering the harbor for years and should result in better water quality. 
The next step for us at the Harbor District and for the water quality is to work with our uh, partners. Most recently, the San Francisco Water Quality Board uh, had a meeting yesterday and passed an amendment to the water quality basin plan to address the contamination of several coastside beaches, including the four within a harbor. The amendment directs multiple agencies to take specific actions to address the issue, and the Harbor District's looking forward to working in partnership with those agencies. The Harbor District has already started to an engagement by suggesting a roundtable discussion with all involved parties to address water quality and a comprehensive plan to address it. The next project I want to talk about is the West Trail, a local treasure. It's currently in the before uh, condition where you can see the trail is falling in and there is no beach and it's getting quite narrow. On the right is the after picture and what we, in, we believe it'll look like where you'll see coastal vegetation, you'll see a beach and you'll see walkways to that beach to protect the vegetation. We're very excited about this uh, opportunity right now. Uh, but bringing back the beach is not the only reason uh, the West Trail is important to us. We also need it for emergency response and uh, rescues. In the picture that you're seeing, it was a recent fire out at the end of the West Trail and the, and the firefighters and the Harbor Patrol were able to get pickups out there, but it was very narrow and the path is narrowing with every storm. Soon trucks and firefighters and uh, rescue personnel will no longer be able to reach out there if we don't get the trail repaired soon. The good news is, is that all the permits, uh, this project is going to permit on Friday with the Coastal Commission. We're expecting the Coastal Commission to approve that. The Coastal Commission has, is very supportive of this project as it will be a test bed for living coastline repair and protection as opposed to hardening the beach. We're returning to a natural state. So they'll be watching this project for not only Half Moon Bay, but for other projects within San Mateo County and throughout the state of California. The next is a video I'd like to show. It's short, but it's also another reason we need to maintain that West Trail uh, for emergency access. This is recently within the last eight weeks. And you can see the weather's kind of confused, the waves are confused and close into shore, which was being showed by this video, the waves aren't that large. And lots of people will think it's easy to walk out there and they're in no danger. There's a lot of wind. So you see the water being blown up onto the breakwater and you'll see the spin drift, but the waves aren't large. Now, if I look, direct your attention to the wave on the right coming in right now, again, not a very big wave, but there is a lot of water being pushed up onto the beach. And over the breakwater. Those people standing next to the sign is, are, is a sign warning them about uh, high, high waves. Luckily, all those peoples and the dogs that were washed out into the harbor were able to self recover and they're fine. But that just demonstrates the uh, dangers out there that we need to maintain that emergency access out to Mavericks Beach. So that project you will see completed by the end of 2021, which we're very excited about. It's been several years in the making. The next project we're working on and moving forward on is the RV park restroom and green space at the RV park at Mavericks Beach. We've already held one public uh, meeting presenting uh, preferred al our pre alternatives to the restroom complex and green space and a preferred alternative, which is indicated in this photo was selected. And now the uh, specifications are being prepared for, to put it out to bid for construction. We expect to break ground on this project this year and completed it early next year. This is just a view of the, of the restroom complex and the green space and the trail going through. This is from inside the restroom complex where you see that's vented. So you'll be able to see in, in and out of the 
uh, open areas where it has hand washing stations, mirrors, and then we'll have three separate bathroom stalls that are unisex. The complex will also have outdoor showers, which you see in the left of the photos, bike racks for people to bike their, uh, park their bikes, and also we'll have abundant supply of trash cans and recycling cans so that we can keep the site maintained. And then here's a view coming from Surfer Beach on the trail towards the project. As we all know, currently this space is a parking lot. So we're looking forward to this. It is a great asset to the coast side and the visitors to this area. The next project I wanna talk about is Surfer's Beach Replenishment. We've been talking about this for a few years now and you know, the area is indicated by the red slash lines is where we'll take dredge material from inside the harbor and place it onto Surfer's Beach where it's indicated by the red dots. This project was has hit a couple delays, mainly eelgrass. And the three pictures you see in the eelgrass is, uh, you can see the eelgrass beds at low tide up there in the upper left. The upper right is just a close up of what eelgrass is. And then that bottom picture, just for your awareness, is what eelgrass beds look like after uh, the public has come in and did clam good digging activities on the beach. So this beach is really accessible, open to the public, and easy to get to, so clamming activity is high. The areas highlighted in green are the current eelgrass beds in the harbor, which provide critical fish habitat. And because of the sand uh, silting in in those areas, they become perfect, de perfect, perfect depth for eelgrass to grow. That green spot in the middle is where we plan on dredging and taking sand that will be pumped over to Surfers Beach. The initial plan is to remove, is to transplant that eelgrass over into the area on the left in green and replant it and remake eelgrass beds in that area to provide and mitigate for the eelgrass habitat that we'll lose due to the dredging. Once this project is done, we're gonna have a restored Surfers Beach providing protection from coastal erosion and protecting Highway 1. We're gonna have healthy eelgrass beds and critical fish habitats inside Pillar Point Harbor. And we'll take advantage of all the studies to establish a harbor dredge program and sediment management program for Pillar Point Harbor itself into the future. And again, we plan on uh, breaking ground on this project uh, in the eelgrass uh, growing season in spring of 2022. Once the eelgrass mitigation has been addressed, then we'll move on to uh, actually placing sand onto uh, Surfers Beach, which we're very excited about. The next project has uh, been going on for about one year and it's due to a lack of public restroom, accessible restrooms at Tenant Row at Pillar Point Harbor. Once we, uh, we have had a public meeting on this project, we pre uh, d presented d three different options. And based on that public meeting, we'll be presenting this matter to the Harbor Board of Commissioners on the 15th of February for uh, approval by placing two additional uh, public accessible restrooms behind Catch Joanne's restroom, again, enhancing uh, accessibility and uh, improving access at Pillar Point Harbor for everybody who comes in and enjoys the harbor. So that project will be completed in this fiscal year or this calendar year of 2021. And then finally, the Harbor District is uh, going to begin a master plan project uh, as early as March, we'll be coming out with it. And we'll definitely uh, need the input from the community on what they feel is important. So we'll definitely have some listening sessions planned and get feedback from the public on where the Harbor District should go into the future with building and maintenance and services that we provide. And I definitely will be leaning on the Chamber of Commerce to get the word out about, these, about the master plan and the meetings that we have scheduled. Uh, Barring any questions, that's my presentation and I appreciate the time. 
Thank you so very much, Jim. If anybody has a question for the harbor, please raise your hand now. Awesome, another perfect presentation because everybody feels like they've got it covered. But again, we'll stick around at the end in case a question pops into your brain. So with that, we are gonna move on to the wonderful Michelle Wheel. She is the new chair of the Mid Coast Community Council, which is a seven person council. Michelle, please take it away. Hey there, can you guys hear me and see my screen? Absolutely. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chris Lynn. And um, it was really interesting to hear all of the other projects that the different areas have going on. Uh, I'll share with you a little bit about the mid coast. So um, you may be asking yourself, who is the mid coast community council? Uh, we're also called the MCC. Uh, we're a municipal advisory council to the San Mateo County Board of Supervisors. Um, we cover the area between Moss Beach and Miramar, so Mon or sorry, Montera and Miramar, so Montera, Moss Beach, Princeton, El Granada, and the unincorporated area of Miramar. The Miramar is actually split between Half Moon Bay and the unincorporated Mid Coast. Um, we have approximately 13,000 residents on the Mid Coast, um, so really very similar in size to the city of Half Moon Bay, maybe even a little bit larger. Um, and we represent those constituents as residents as well as the visitors to the coast. Um, our, our council consists of seven elected council members um, who serve four year terms. Uh, I will note too that we are all volunteers um, and we have zero staff and very little budget, uh, but we do as much as we can with what we have and with our very dedicated council members. So what topics do the, does the MCC cover? Primarily, it's anything that comes to us by our members or um, on the mid coast. Um, but we try to divide our, our topics into a few main areas: um, parks and recreation. Um, so that includes things like um, Quarry Park, the Fitzgerald Marine Reserve, um, the Moss Beach Park uh, and playground that was newly reopened in Moss Beach. Um, we also cover planning, zoning, and code compliance for the mid coast. And so we review any sort of um, plans that come through uh, the, the planning commission. Um, first they go to the various uh, regions, but the mid coast, if, if something falls on the mid coast, whether it is either residential or commercial um, or industrial, we cover that. Uh, we review those items and provide our feedback. Uh, we also cover transportation, which is a, a very big issue of late. Um, with the Connect the Coast Side plan. And um, there's also been a number of things coming up in the, that have come up in the last year regarding transportation, especially crossings on Highway 1. As you know, we're a community that is divided uh, by Highway 1. And so getting from one side to the other is often very difficult. Um, we don't have very many crossings, safe crossings. And um, so that's an area of importance as well as just, um, you know, transportation both in, in automobiles, on bikes, and for pedestrians, as well as uh, our you know, children having safe routes to schools. So that's all part of that transportation bucket. Uh, we also look at infrastructure. That includes things like um, you know, our, our sewer and water. Not, not that we manage those. We know there are independent organizations that manage those, but kind of oversight of those things also um, one of our main issues of late is the Meteor Creek Bridge. And so that is something that we weigh in on. Um, and sustainability, and that's a very broad category that includes everything from coastal erosion to uh, wildfire um, preparation and um, tree re removal projects. Um, so those are things that we are very concerned with and interested in um, weighing in on. And finally, the last category is very broad, is community and communications. Um, so that kind of covers everything that the other categories don't cover. So some of our 2021 priorities 
I mentioned Connect the Coast Side. Uh, so what that is, is a comprehensive tra traffic management plan um, that is put together by the county. Um, and it's um, the latest draft is a 180 page document where they lay out just you know all of the projects that they would recommend for the coast. It's not, none of the projects are funded at this point in time, but it, it's, a, it's a project that's really been in process for many, many years, and it's finally coming to completion this year. And so that's something that we are looking at very closely and trying to gather community feedback in terms of, you know, which of these projects are priorities for people. Um, and those projects include kind of, they run the gamut of, of different um, traffic related projects, everything from um, bicycle parking to safe crossings, um, round, roundabouts and or signalized intersections at certain sections of the mid coast, especially in Moss Beach. Um, and uh, yeah, just a whole bunch of things. And so, so that's a very important document. And if anyone has any feedback, I would encourage you to review that document and provide feedback to the council. Um, and you can, our email address is on our website. We also will be talking about that at our next meeting. We hold meetings twice a month on um, the second and fourth Wednesdays of the month at 7 p.m. And so the next meeting on the 24th will be covering uh, the Connect the Coastside plan. Another issue of late really um, since about the middle of last year has been the Marotta Road and Medio Creek Bridge. Uh, so as you may know that a pedestrian and bicyclist bridge was closed um, last year in July. It took everyone by surprise. It closed the coastal trail and was rerouted all the way up to Highway 1. So that's in that's in Miramar. Um, so anyone who used to ride or walk along the, the coastal trail now has to detour all the way to Highway 1. Uh, there are no other crossing options there. Um, that's something there's been a lot of debate and a lot of community involvement on, but it's been, um, you know, we primarily heard from the community and especially the neighbors there in Miramar that they would like the bridge rebuilt in the existing location. And it turns out that the county has been working on that for a number of years without, without us really um, being able to, to, ex to contribute to, uh, our thoughts to. And so that's an issue that we took up as soon as that bridge was closed. Um, we've had a number of meetings about it. And um, it looks like it, as of our meeting last night, we voted to approve a letter that will support the rebuilding of the bridge in the current location, but with plans to really look at what happens when that bridge eventually and inevitably fails due to the fact that erosion is occurring. Uh, so, you know, we hope that the county will put some budget and effort into starting to have a plan so that in 20 years or whenever it is that the bridge no longer becomes usable, the new bridge, um, that we are able to have a have a bridge and not have this sort of emergency shutdown of the coastal trail and be able to you know plan for that right now. And that goes into coastal erosion and armoring. Um, we know that certain sections of the coast side, um, and this is a really big focus in Miramar right now, are um, you know being eroded. Um, we hope that projects that some of our adjacent um, organizations will, will do, such as the Surfers Beach Sand Replenishment Project could potentially improve uh, and reduce the amount of erosion that's occurring, um, but we need to be prepared for that. And so we urge the county through our letters and our communications to take a look at that and, and contribute funds toward that now. Also emergency preparedness with the fires last summer um, you know, I think a lot of us were caught by surprise, um, especially those of us, uh, those, those residents in El Granada are especially concerned with uh, the potential for wildfire in that area. There's a huge stand of eucalyptus trees, which are known to be um, very flammable right above all the houses in El Granada. And so um, we are working with the county to try to prepare um, and do what we can to reduce the um, eucalyptus groves there, potentially do some fuel reduction projects and help our um, community members there uh, be better prepared and hopefully um, less susceptible to a wildfire. And then as we all are involved in, you know, everything, life has changed for all of us due to COVID. 
um, we don't have a huge impact here, but as the Mid Coast Community Council, we, we would like to work with the county to um, help our, con our constituents get access to COVID vaccines, um, potentially without having to drive over the hill to, um, to access those. So that's one of our areas of focus coming up. And then a personal focus of mine, um, just I, I have a background in marketing and I'm very interested in increasing communication and community involvement. And so that's uh, you know something that I've taken on as chair of the MCC this year is trying to increase that, especially with our virtual Zoom meetings and our you know inability to really meet people in person right now. Um, we have to rely on digital means in order to get the word out about what we're doing. And so for a long time, we've had a website which is uh, managed by Lisa Ketchum. And it's an amazing resource. I definitely encourage any of you to go to midcoastcommunitycouncil.org and check out our website. It, it may not be the most beautiful modern website, but the information that is there is extremely comprehensive, covers um, you know, the last 20 years or more of MCC's, um, all of our work, and it, you know, has everything, really everything that we've done is, is captured there on the website. Um, we also have recently started a Midcoast newsletter, and so we've, that's going to be a quarterly newsletter. We sent out the first edition back in November, and um, as of today, actually, we have a new sign-up. You can see on our website to sign up for that mailing list, um, the Midcoast newsletter. Um, you can also sign up to receive our agendas via email, and so we will be working on our second edition of that newsletter to come out in March. Um, and we, yeah, I would encourage anyone to sign up for our, our email list so, so that you can receive that newsletter. It's going to be just a recap of the recent issues that we're taking on and just another way to reach the community. And we also plan on having that newsletter translated into Spanish. We also use social media. We have our Facebook page. We use Nextdoor to get the word out about what we're doing. And um, something that we did last year, and I hope to continue this year, is do surveys just to have get more feedback from members of the community um, to, you know, really they're the ones that guide us in terms of what we do. And so we listen to them, you know, anyone can email, email us at any time. And we often, uh, that's the first way, oftentimes that's the first way that we hear about issues that are occurring and um, it individually put those on our agendas. Uh, so that's it, a quick, presentation, but I would love to hear any questions that anyone has. Thank you so very much, Michelle. If anybody would like to raise their hand, please feel free to do so right now. We are jamming with these very thorough presentations. Oh, we've got a question from Casey Dunn. Hey, Casey. Hey, hi, Michelle. Uh, I'm curious, how often does uh, Don Horsley uh, attend the Zoom meetings you guys have? Rarely. He always sends a representative. Um, so we, we do have someone, at least one person from his office on every single meeting. And her name's Lena, and she stayed oh, yeah. at the whole meeting. Um, but yeah, the last meeting that he attended was our retreat, uh, which is our annual administrative and planning retreat that occurred in January. Um, so that's the last time he was physically at a meeting, or not physically, virtually, I would say, I should say. Oh, thanks for that idea uh, about an invitation to the retreat, because we haven't uh, pulled ours off yet. And so it might be, that might be an appropriate way. We usually get Bray, Hunter. Yeah. 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 But sometimes Leslie. So cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Last call for questions in regards to Mid Coast Community Council. All right. Well, thank you very much to our presenters. And now I'm going to share my screen and talk a little bit about the chamber. All right. Um, so the chamber is a regional chamber. Um, so as many of you are probably familiar with, um, like over the hill, there's almost a chamber per city. 
Um, we are lucky for us that our chamber represents the entire coast side from Pescadero to Montera back to Highway 35. So we are considered a regional chamber. Um, we have three areas of concentration, um, which we in the chamber community call ourselves 3C chambers. We're catalysts, conveners, and champions for our local economy. So we are the COSIDE's premier business development advocate. Uh, our focus under Catalyst is marketing, education, and resources for business growth. So we are constantly evolving our programs and trying to bring in educators that can help our businesses learn new skills. Thank you to um, grant money from both the city and the county. We have been able to build out a business development center in our office that people will be able to come in and receive consulting and classes. We're very excited to unveil that once we're allowed to have people in our space safely. Under convener, this is where we do a lot of our most core work, which is creating connections and relationships uh, and building support for our business community. So if an issue arises that affects an industry or a single business um, a little bit differently than others, we try to make sure that we connect that business or industry with proper uh, authorities or um, our legislate, uh, legislators um, to make sure that their voices are being heard and that they're able to communicate with one another and create strong bonds so that we can bridge any gaps that might arise. Our goal is to make our coastside economy a fair and wonderful place for our businesses and therefore greater community to thrive. And that brings us to being a champion. We wanna champion the coastside to be the coastside that the coastside wants to be. Uh, so through our efforts with advocacy and collaborations with the different agencies, including the ones who presented here, we work to create a economy of business sustainability. Um, so that changes quite often. Uh, we're very much chasing ordinances and laws that are coming down the pipe from the city, the county, all the way up to the state um, to make sure that our business community is aware of what is coming and can weigh in when appropriate. Uh, I am as the president and CEO, always available to our members. We are a member-driven organization. So basically our members are who support us to do the things that we can do. Um, so we invite any business on the co side to please consider joining the chamber as it helps us create more opportunities to strengthen our economy as a whole. The healthier we are, the healthier you are. Thank you very much. And if anybody has any questions for me about the chamber, please feel free to raise your hand. Perfect, great. And with that concludes our presentations. If anybody has any questions that have popped into their mind about any of our presenters, um, please feel free to raise your hand now. All right, seeing none, I would like to invite, oh, 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 maybe, possibly, I saw some hands pop up, pop down. Bob, I think it's, oh, it's like virtual hands and real hands. Yes. <laughs> First one, yeah, I think Virginia uh, raised her real hand before I got my virtual hand up so she can go first. Now go ahead, Bob. I'll go after you. Okay. So my question is for um, Casey. Uh, this is Bob Nisbet, city, man city manager for the city of Half Moon Bay. Yeah, uh, hi, Bob. I, yeah, I think you might have touched on this a little in your presentation, but... Um, <clears throat> I ride my um, bike through Pescadero quite frequently on Saturdays and Sundays. And it's pre-COVID, it's always a delightful stop for visitors on a nice weekend. Uh, but what I've noticed is uh, more recently, uh, post-COVID, 
uh, if it's a nice day. Uh, the downtown Pescadero is just getting throngs of people on the weekends, it seems to me. So I was just wondering if uh, you and your community have noticed that as well, and that's a COVID phenomenon. And then also part two, you know, how the businesses are finding the right balance with COVID. And then part three is, is, is this influx of visitors, which I don't think is gonna go away. Is that something the community down there is embracing? Because Pescadero, in my opinion, is just a gem and there's just so much uh, opportunity in, in my humble opinion. Thank you. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, oh, wait, am I still muted? No. The, uh, the increase was very, very uh, substantial, on, especially on nice days. And we, uh, there's a, there's actually, because everyone's able to skyvy off and set their own schedules, we see a number of bicyclists even you know, during the week. The uh, county parking lot often has uh, people there with their dualies down and racking out bikes for regional visits, as well as folks like yourself that just do the entire tour. Um, it is the bicyclists are embrace more than the car clubs <laughs> because of the and I know as a bicyclist, you often hear complaints about um, those damn bicyclists, but now people are really concerned about getting crushed by the cars zipping around and racing and, you know, coming down in early hours of the morning and setting up the convoys and racing along stage road and Cloverdale and all these other side streets. Um, the in comparison, the, the bikes are causing less stress. The community misses though the, the century rides and the big organized rides that would happen in the area uh, because those also brought in a lot of people. Um, but to include in that, that, that point, uh, we don't really expect it to go down because people discovered it, right? Discovered the area. What we are having is, is um, we have such a trash problem. People steal the trash cans that we put out which is sort of astounding. We're trying to, so we have a lot of issues with um, with that and handicapped parking has become an issue because as you know, the streets aren't lined and there's, you know, the, the standards are rather complicated. So people that want to come down and wheel around, you know, or, or have trouble getting into our shops, you know, are often uh, left out in the cold. So there, we have that sort of uh, issue. Um, and forgive me, what was the third point, the third aspect? Yeah. Well, well, it, it's more the long term, and I'll just uh, I'll just kind of follow up by yeah. uh, re, re uh, underscoring what our mayor advertised earlier, and that is, you know, we're having this open house tonight about recovery, and it is a coastside effort, and so hopefully you or other Pescadarians uh, can attend um, because, yeah, what you're seeing I think is the same thing what we're seeing in Half Moon Bay. And, and, and as, as our mayor said, it's, it, you know, part of the effort is short term, but also just long term, it's not going to go away. And yeah. so how do we embrace, uh, embrace the future? And like I said, I just, I just, for me, Pescadero is just a gem. And, uh, and I have a feeling, uh, yeah, there's lots of opportunity there for the local businesses uh, to capitalize on, on what, like you say, it's been discovered. Um, so just wanted to know if that's something that's being embraced or not. But again, encourage you and others to come to our open house tonight on this on this very subject. I, I slammed it into the PMAC website as this meeting was going on and I sent a mail to the um, COVID-19 resources group that we run down that way uh, ad advertising it. So I hope we get some folks. Um, the constraint with visiting population is basically sanitary. We have no water sewage district we have septic tanks if if that we're in a flood zone that squelches the uh possibility of uh of putting in uh restrooms um covid complicates that because our joints are small you know really so it's it's complicated it is complicated we we've started the community started looking into alternative um essentially closed system water treatment plants but that's a that's that's a major capital issue and we're an un unincorporated gem right we're a, what are we strictly we're a rural service center so we're not even a town right so well well thank you thank you for that yeah i just wanted to make that note that uh yeah you guys are really busy on the weekends i've noticed thank you thank you bob 
Um, we do have a new hand raised, um, but Virginia had also hand raised her hand, so I just wanted to give Virginia a chance to speak. Oh, I thank you, Chris Lynn. I just want to thank everyone for their presentations today. It was they were all very informative. And I just want to reiterate what Jim mentioned. Um, we're doing a lot of things in 2021 and we'll be looking for public input. So I just want to remind everyone to please, you know, be aware that we welcome public input and um, Jim's going to be reaching out to the different stakeholders and giving public notices for some of the, the things that we are doing, some of the projects um, that are very important. And um, I want to also thank Chris Lynn for putting together this state of the coast site, which I think is terrific. And Chris Lynn, please let us know, or meaning the Harbor District, know what we can do to support you. I know that we're members, but the Harbor District and the Harbor Board is also um, looking at, you know, how we can help and support our our tenants and those who bring in revenue to the Harbor District since 35% of our revenue comes from um, enterprise funds. So I'll be creating an ad hoc committee on revenue and income to deal with that. And we'd love to work with you, the, the, the chamber and um, the city of Half Moon Bay and you know anyone who you know is kind of suffered through economic or will be suffering through economic recovery because we can all do this together. Thank you. Thank you, Virginia. Next, um, we have a question from Michelle Dragony. Hi, um, Casey was talking about an enclosed water system. Would that be a package plant? Um, the, uh, at the Sewer Authority Midco site this last Monday, they actually had um, uh, Ronaldo Vezaliza come and present on um, package plants, which are uh, localized sewage systems. They're sort of plug and play. Um, they've been they've been around for a long time, um, but uh, it's an interesting thing to look at in terms of taking some place like Pescadero and um, making it independent of its water and its sewer. So uh, I will be posting that on Coastside Buzz, and you can watch that presentation at your leisure. Yeah, uh, yes, Michelle, it was uh, it was Ronaldo uh, presenting um, the work to uh, the group called Sustainable Pescadero. Mm -hmm. And he's mm -hmm. also um, online to present at PMAC. Um, Excellent. And and uh, it with the uh, slowly waning population of the area, I think there's projections that the um, school district will merge. So there's some chance of using the uh, the elementary school um, area for some sort of um, housing. But it's, it's, it's pretty far out. Sure. Well, Sam is just st uh, starting um, a group called um, 2040. So maybe somebody at PMAC who's got their head in the, you know, the sewer water thing might want to, you know, call up Kishin or one of the board members and, and get onto that, that meeting. It's all very exploratory. It's, it's exciting. It's, it's new technology. And I, I like new technology. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the heads up. Yep. Ronaldo's a great presenter, isn't he? He is. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, this is great. Oh, thank you. I learned a lot. And thank you to everybody who has come. I don't see any any other hands up, so I'm going to go ahead and move towards conclusion. Um, so again, I want to give another wonderful thank you to our sponsors who made this possible: Rocket Farms, San Mateo Credit Union, and Tri Counties Bank. And I want to thank the Chamber of Commerce's Board of Directors, um, 11 of my most favorite people to work with, and they allow me to try these things out and give me the latitude to um, bring new programs to the co-side. And I'm just so thankful for the support that they, they give me to do these things. I would also like to give a super shout out to our wonderful presenters. Again, it was Casey Dunn from Pescadero. Um, Mayor Robert Brownstone from the city of Half Moon Bay, uh, Jim and Virginia from the San Mateo County Harbor District, Michelle from the Mid Coast Community Council, and then lastly myself, the Crystal Lynn, the president and CEO of the Half Moon Bay Coastside Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, and I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Bye. <laughs>